I'm about to replace the final PA board of this FT817, which I've been enjoying using. I wasn't expecting to be doing this today. I was expecting to be making a video about the DC power input, either by battery or externally, and the RF power output. But while I was getting set up to do that, I discovered that this radio is only giving out half of the expected RF power. So I've done a bit of investigation and in a sense I'm jumping to a conclusion in thinking that one of the output transistors may be blown. Just a note of caution before moving on. Other issues can cause the appearance of low or no power, not just the finals board. There are fuses in later versions of the FT817 to protect the PA board and component issues in the signal path can give the appearance of low or no power on SSB or CW or whatever because FM follows a different path to SSB and CW. So it's worth really thoroughly checking. You can have low power on one, full power in the other and make absolutely sure that it is the board you need to replace before going ahead and buying one and fitting it. So I've managed to find a replacement board. This came from a company called Radio World. I haven't found a video of anybody just changing this board. There is a brilliant video by TRX Lab of replacing an individual MOSFET, but then he is one of the all-time great electronics and radio engineers, and I don't have his equipment or expertise. So I'm going to change the board. And to help me, I've downloaded and printed out some information from the... KA7OEI FT817 pages, which is a brilliant internet resource if you have one of these radios. And he recommends an article from 2007 by Michael Perry, which I'm going to follow as I start uh, on this project. So in a moment, I'll come back with the radio open and ready to open up the RF power section and have a look and see what the project involves. To get to the RF power amplifier, it's necessary to remove the bottom cover completely. So I took out all of the screws and I also loosened or removed some of the top cover screws as well. So I've removed the back cover and then here's the RF power section. And what I need to do is just peel back this cover, which has a plastic strip along here and it just peels away with the glue. So I'm doing quite well at the moment. I'm going to try and get this front edge or back edge off first. Here it comes. And then ease the sides off. I think I might just need to tease that out a bit. It's now coming off and I realised I had to remove the screw at the back holding the top cover on and loosen the other one. And this held the side plastic in. And now I can ease it back. And there's my PA board revealed. And I think I can just leave that like that. And then we're ready for the next stage of actually finding and sorting out how to replace the finals board. So with that opened and focused in a bit more, and I'll cut away to some pictures too, uh, here's what I'm seeing. There's my finals board, and I need to remove these two coax wires, these two coax wires, and then there are two jumpers, one over there and one over there. And if I've understood it correctly, when I'm putting the thing back together, one of these jumpers is left off and used to measure the current flowing into the board to adjust the potentiometers. So I'm now going to get ready to do some desoldering, but before I do that, I'm going to ground myself and uh, also have a look at the new board and see how that compares to what I'm seeing inside the radio. So I have my, my old board and my new board next to each other, and I can just confirm to myself that there are four pads here, one pad there, and two pads here. So now I'm going to put some flux on the contacts of the old board ready for desoldering. Right, so there's one off and that was a bit trickier than I expected. So my technique is to add some flux, 
put some fresh solder on the soldering iron and use quite a lot of heat and a reasonably large tip if it's quite a large contact otherwise there's just not enough heat to melt it quickly and lift the wire there we go that's quick and easy so those two are off so now for the two jumpers there's one here and that actually has a lot of solder on it so let's try that yeah that was easy good but the other one is dug away right in the corner so let's turn the board round give myself the right access let's get some fresh solder on the on the iron it's got flux on already right so I'm gripping the wire and heat it up and there it comes so all the wires are now free of the board and I'm just going to give that a little check and then I'll unscrew it and see if I can lift it out. Right, so now I'm at the stage where I can probably remove the board. I've lifted all the connections, the coax here and here, the two jumpers, one there and one there. And I didn't get very good video of that I'm afraid because my head was in the way, uh, but I I've, hope I've showed some of it. And then um, now I can undo the two screws. I just tested them, they were pretty tough. So you need to use a robust screwdriver that will fit. There's one. Oh, it's not on the subject of the screws. If you, you have to get the right screwdriver. I used actually used a straight one because they are quite soft. And I realized as soon as I started that my cross headed screwdriver was going to damage the screw. So. That's now loose and will the board lift out? Yes, I think it will. Here it comes. Oh no, I forgot something. I've got one more tag to remove, which is the earth tag. So let's do that before I uh, destroy everything and try and get this right. So I've got my soldering iron ready again and tin the tip and uh, actually think now it was probably quite a good thing to have left this because I can just ease it off, I hope, while I desolder it. So let's try and melt that solder in there. And away it comes. So that was quite a good move. I put the iron onto the pad here as I as I pulled the whole board away and it managed to lift it from its um, grounding tag there. Yeah, so we put that to one side and in a moment the transplant should carry on and there we are the boards in place so let's screw it back in all done so now I'm going to put the coax connectors back first so I think start again with some flux on everything that might need it So there's the first coax in. I'm going to try and get the earthing strip in. So I've put some extra solder on and I'm going to press it down. Hopefully solder it on. So here's the grounding strip bent over ready to solder. And if you are doing this in the future and watching my video, uh, here's my tip. That's actually quite difficult to bend. So it needs some careful handling and uh, you need to think about that while you're taking it off and putting it back on. So here we go. Okay. So the, the grounding strips now soldered back in, obviously that's very important. And now let's try and do the other two coax wires. So my technique is to tin both contacts, push it into place, tack it down on both sides, and then it won't move after that. So I can add maybe a bit extra solder and just confirm the validity of the solder joint. So I finished all the soldering and the last thing I did was to put an extra jumper onto the power input tag of the finals board. On the other jumper there should always be the supply voltage. I've got my power supply set to 12 volt and that is just under 12 volt. And that power comes from the top board via the big jumper. Uh, if you remember how taking the top board out, if you've ever fitted a filter or anything, uh, you need to reinsert the top board on top of some pins which are actually bringing 
They're all joined together and they bring the supply voltage to the PA board. So that circuit at the moment is broken because I didn't solder the pin back on, but instead the voltage is passing through the meter and measuring the current on the way to energize the board. So for the alignment, we have to set the current on two potentiometers. The first one is nearest the back of the radio. The second one is on the other side of the board near the jumper. And uh, according to the information, you set the first one to about 45 milliamps and then the second one to about 85 milliamps and then leave it alone. So the radio is set to in the 1.8 megahertz band on CW with the mic plugged in and when you press PTT it should switch to transmit but not actually supply any RF. So if I do that briefly you just see the current draw changes as the transmitter goes into power to, uh, into transmit mode but nothing like the current it would draw if it was actually sending out a signal. Now I've got a fairly reasonably insulated screwdriver but I'll put, so I'm going to set that into, into number one and press P to T and start turning and see if I can get up to somewhere around 40. It takes quite a long before while before anything happens. Here we go, 6, 27, 54, very twitchy. Nearly there. Nearly there, I want to get to 45-ish. Yeah, let's try that again. That says 40, now I let go, so tiny adjustments. And again, see it's gone way up. Just bring it back a bit. Okay, it's nearly there. I don't think it's too critical, so that's 42. So then um, potentiometer number two is at the back here, so I'm going to go to that and adjust that so this then goes up to 85 or so. It's still not moving, I'm still turning. Here we go. Oops, I had it then. Let's trigger it again. 89, that'll do. It's very close. It's within a few milliamps. So I don't think my meter's particularly accurate and I'm sure the um, a few milliamps here and there is not the end of the world. So as far as I can tell, this finals board is now in and working, I hope, if I haven't ruined it again. So all I need to do now is remove the clips, obviously, remove the jumper I added to do the current measurement, and then solder the power directly back to the board. And then I should be able to uh, just semi-close the radio and test the RF. So I'll do that and uh, let you know in a moment whether it worked or not. I do hope so. So I'm not sure how this uh, I'm not sure how this uh, hand held video will go, but uh, you can see now I've completed the board. I can always substitute this picture with a photograph. The um, the jumper's been resoldered, so there's power to the board. Not sure about the focus there. It's a bit close, and you can see the whole board in place. And I've checked all the connections as far as I can tell. There are no shorts and no problems. So now I'm going to plug in the key, set it to the right mode and uh, check it on my oscilloscope and see if I've got some power. Right, I'm ready now to test the power. I've got my very crude homemade dummy load attached and the voltage from that attached across my oscilloscope and uh, I'm going to measure the peak to peak voltage on FM and use the formula that I've picked up from reading articles by Han Summers and others by squaring that and dividing it by 400. So we're on 20 meters at uh, FM mode and here we go. I've got 44.8 volts, nice clean sine wave 
and I've already done the calculation and that tells me I've got 5.02 watts or 5 watts. I'm not convinced of the accuracy of this method but it's good enough for me for the moment. So now if I switch the radio down to the next level which should be two and a half watts I get a voltage of 33.6 to 34 and that comes out as 2.8 watts so that's great. Let's go down one more and that's exactly 20 volts peak to peak which is one watt. So if that's true that's brilliant and the last one I get 15 15.2 slightly lower than I had before so that's somewhere between 0.5 and 0.6 watts which is where it should be so the operation was a success and uh, I'm ready to use the rig again well it's been a really interesting weekend project replacing the finals board on this FT817 ND and if you have to do this project yourself I hope you found this helpful and interesting all I need to do now is put all the screws in and reassemble my radio and start using it again so once I've done some of that I'll be back with more videos soon